Hey there, how are you doing? Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. This is a very popular album in English speaking countries at least, and people have talked about it a lot. But I think I can add at least one or two things. For example, don't delete any of the fucking tracks. What does this record exactly do? Well, it's a coming of age album, so it has a lot of romantic songs. Not, not romance as in me to you romance, but as in me and me romance. You know, the morphing feeling that things are changing and that sense of exhilaration, exhilaration. <laughs> Of a new world. Also, this record is a complete collage of tons of styles. It has grunge, dream pop, indie rock, chamber pop, slow core. There is also one symphonic rock of that type of 90s symphonic rock that some bands try to do in one song and then never again. It's a big mythy collage of alternative music and I really like that. Now I need you to take note, take note uh, somewhere with a pen or whatever. How do you make a two-hour album with lots of styles and different music genres and keep the experience cohesive? That's right! That's right! You submerge the album in a consistent imagery and sound, like as in a sound of imagery. A lot of the songs here, not all of them, but a lot of the songs give you a faint, it's a faint but it's strong enough Scent, scent of fairy tales, or oh, and a uh, 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 late and a late Victorian era feel, yeah. And that that's that's and that's what that's what and, and you listen to it and that's and you listen to it and that's what it makes you say, wow, this is an experience. And these songs they are filled with this enthusiasm, but there is some sadness in them as well. There is enthusiasm and and melancholy in it, and. It's all the layering, layering, layering of all these emotions that gives you a whiplash and makes you say, damn, I'm alive. And wh why does the record do this? Why will you make a record like this? Like, so that's the reason I wanted to review it. This record is one of the most well-known examples of excess and splurging in, you know, the my stream uh, music uh, whatever it's excessive but only in the sum of its parts that's right it's like a convenient meaty package of all sorts of music but the but the individual pieces are accessible as they come so what do i get from this that sometimes it's just a matter of presentation the way you present your music your art uh, for someone like me that is needing constant overstimulation of music and changes to keep my brain on track on a song here the songs i still feel they don't let me wander away maybe it's the thick emotional layering and the eagerness of youth that makes the heavy lifting here but i don't know the songs here are great i just <sighs> I saw some people that say that they would prefer to have made the creative process behind this album a democracy, to have some tracks removed and whatnot. No, 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 just no. I'm pretty sure that we won't have as much range with the music uh, and so many ideas. I mean, even even if I can't connect with the hundred percent of the songs on this thing, uh, there are uh, there are tracks that I love that people keep hating on it, this uh, Scorch Earth is great, uh, so I like the range, I like to have more, sometimes more is more, 100% prefer an act to make a self-indulgent, overblown record like this instead to try to be as tight and one size fits all as possible like other bands I know, yeah we know what band exactly I'm talking about here. I was thinking, I was thinking to check about the other records of this band. There is a three-hour rock opera that supposedly they made that everybody hated, but dude, I need to listen to it. It doesn't matter if it's bad or whatever, but I prefer people to make unapologetic art. We will have gotten an album like this that feels like going to a candy store if the focus wasn't so unapologetic and splurging, eating, splurgerly.
Even if they could, I don't know, put said the ray to Jerry instead of Lily, or that sometimes I prefer the aeroplane flies high to XYU, or that Zero stinks from a mile away and I hate it, it doesn't matter. It's a great record because of its ambition. I think that if you think about it, 1979 is not remotely representative of the band. It's one of those weird experiments they made, but it turned to be probably their most successful song. That's it. That's why I like this record. I, I, emotionally great, uh, yeah, sonically varied, uh, very uh, hits you deeply. Uh, great record. Great, great, great. And the fact that the vocalist sounds like a cartoon character resonates with me in a level I can't even comprehend yet. Goodbye, my beautiful souls. Stay safe.